What is going on everybody? Jay Hayes here, so Sam be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Everybody knows how much I love the Typhoon GT3. One of, and if not, the best RTA I've ever used. A lot of people talked about this company when they were first launched. This was a couple years ago, maybe a year ago and some change, and I was never able to get my hands on one. There was a couple on some waffles, don't want to get into what a waffle is, and we're not talking about the kind that you put butter and syrup in. I never got my hands on one. It was extremely extremely hard. I did get some Uber Toots, which in fact are very, very, very rare and sexy RTAs. I really don't want to make it about this, but this is the Uber Toot, right? The I have this little PMMA glass on the center, but as you can see, it's extremely extremely stained. It was made out of the UK. A gentleman that made them extremely rare, limited quantities. Made one, two, and I believe the third batch, and then that was it. This falls in that same category of just a really high-end RTA. The price point of this is going to veer most people away. As soon as you see that price point, it's going to knock your socks off. It's more than what most cheap three to four box mods would cost. So when I first saw this on another site that was selling high ends, I had to pick it up, especially it being in the States. Yeah, I needed to get it. So I got it, and the box is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, everything about this just screams high end. When I first opened it up, I had to film it because I knew people would question what I'm about ready to tell you right now. I don't want this to really hurt the rating, but it will deduct a point or two just because when I got it, there was stuff all over the top cap. There was nothing in the base. There wasn't a drop of liquid anywhere, but there was in the top cap. And of course, I am going to show you that video. Matter of fact, I'll just plug that in right now brand new skyline uh, was taking it apart to take a look at the insides and um, sure enough you'll see some wetness here and on the inside of the cap see all the wetness everywhere soaking wet let's take the rest of this apart and see what we got this is a brand new skyline by the way from vaping art. It looks, that's all dry there. Now there's no way this was used because I know vaping art very, very well. Nothing on the inside there. And then that's it. So the top cap was just absolutely soaking wet. You could still see it. This piece here comes out too. There you go. There's even more on the inside there. So that's the video. It was just really more so on the top where the juice flow control and the chimney met up, not so much anywhere else on the tank. So without further ado, let's bring this down. Let me show you everything inside the box. Work it. Work, work, work. Let's flip it. Here we go, here we go. Watch me flow. Oh no, this is Skyline. Watch it glow. E Smoke Guru is the company that makes this. And again, it is out of Greece. Skyline is the name of the RTA. This is the display box that it comes in. Really, really super, super sexy. I believe that to be some type of cherry. Or maybe it's a red birch mahogany. Where's all my woodworkers at? Where you at? On the bottom here, there's a little sticky. I'm assuming that is the person that inspected this, or this may be the mod maker that's actually making this device. Not 100% sure. The initials on there appear to be DW or DL. Down low. Don't wait. Here we go. Really nice, super sexy display. I feel like I'm opening some kind of rifle case. Peripheral bag, an extra drip tip, 510 style. Another peripheral bag, the tank itself, and then underneath the little padding, you have a manual. Now, usually when you buy high-end devices, they don't have any kind of manual. They expect you to know what you're doing. And rightfully so, just because if it is high-end, you already know how devices work, or you should, just because you're seeking out something that's a little bit more rare than most. This is their manual. It's not gonna be extremely high-end and graph. I think at this point, we should be happy with anything we get from any kind of high-end company that's gonna tell you a little bit about the device. There's gonna be three languages that this is gonna be in. Greek, which is gonna be the main language that it's in because it is coming from Greece, English, and German. When I was looking at the profile bag, I saw this piece. I was really confused as to what exactly this tool does. Judging by what this says right here, air disc extraction tool. 
I feel that's that little piece I was just looking at. I don't know what else it would be. There's even a manual breakdown of the tank and all the different parts of the tank. This is an air disc. Basically what their air disc is, a reduction of airflow, meaning that you're gonna, you can make it more tighter than what it would be by default. Not only are you gonna be able to reduce the airflow with this little apparatus here, and I do believe you could buy these in different configurations. This is something that you saw on the Tillamahos or the Typhoon GT3 where you put a tube in to reduce the amount of airflow that you have coming in, making it more of a mouth to lung option or direct lung, depending on which adapter you're using. So not only can you adjust it with this, you can adjust it even further with the airflow control ring down here. We are going to go over that. Inside the other peripheral bag, you're going to see a bunch of stuff that we've seen before. Some extra screws, some extra O-rings, and then this little piece right here. I don't know how I can explain this, but this little tool has some of the best machining that I've ever seen. This is designed to take this out. I'm gonna try to break this down as much as possible for you to understand all the different parts and how it works. So on the top, you're gonna have a 510 drip tip. Go ahead and pull that out. You're gonna have a double O-ring situation underneath. When you first get this device, the O-rings of this are gonna be very, very, very tight. The machining of the stock drip tip that this comes with has really nice machining. Double O-ring situation that we've seen before keeps that double security going down. If you're not a fan of the stainless steel and getting your lip funk all over it, you can use the Delrin option that they have, and that's the same exact mold as what the stainless steel rendition is, just with Delrin. The top piece of this tank is very deceiving, because looking at it, you would think that you would just unscrew this piece and be able to fill it up. Also, by looking at the manual, they mention the same situation. User has to close the liquid flow control to the resistance coil, turning the liquid controller clockwise. Picture number one, which is right there, turning it. Then unscrew and remove the upper cap of the tank, which secures liquid controller, which is, which is true, but that's, it says picture two, but that's, I guess that's kind of the right picture. It's picture three where it gets a little jumpy. Picture three says after, after this, remove liquid controller by turning it half to the left and pull to release the hexagon, which keeps it in place, picture three. So picture three to me looks like you would remove the whole top cap, you don't. I don't think that's necessarily a flaw, I just feel like the diagram is incorrect. So when you get this and you wanna fill this up, don't try to pull this, cause you're gonna be pulling on for days. This top cap or liquid controller is secured by this. So you're gonna go ahead and unscrew this, really good threading. super smooth. So now that that top cap is gone, this piece here to fill the tank, you're going to give that a pull. Now inside here, the machining is friggin phenomenal. You have a hexagon shape inside where your airflow or your chimney is going to be. And you also have your chimney, which is also a hexagon shape. What this does is alleviate a lot of different things. For instance, if you're screwing the top cap on and it catches this, this is just going to spin if it didn't have that hex. Having that hex and having it set, it's not really going to spin at all. They mentioned in the manual to adjust the juice flow, you're just going to spin this. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, when you first get this, you're not going to be able to just spin this. I had to take this off, get a pair of pliers, and then turn this. Now, we've all been taught righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's the opposite here. If you go to the left, what's going to happen is that's going to tighten down the chimney section onto the deck. Let me explain. Right now, I grab a pair of pliers, grab this. You have to be careful because you only get one glass. Now, when I spin this, what's happening is, look. You see what's happening? That's allowing me to spin the chamber. That's not loosening it. All that's doing is just allowing me to spin the juice flow control. What I'm trying to do is line up the channels with the actual juice ports. The way you adjust the juice flow control is something that I've never seen on anything before. Only time you're gonna need to use a pair of pliers to do that is if you're trying to adjust the original channel lining up with the chimney itself. After that, it's real simple to adjust. Check out the juice flow control. As I turn this to the right, what's happening is you're seeing this little door come down and that's gonna be across the board. That is absolutely so very, very much unique. Due to the fact that the knurling on this juice flow control, it may rip up your fingers a little bit. You see how the door is going down now? That's the juice flow control. 
If you're looking, Juice Flow Control is all the way open. As you spin this, it closes it down. Oh my god, is that gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. So what I would recommend is if you do have it all the way open, don't try to grind on this anymore. But you do have to take this Juice Flow Control off in order to fill the tank. And when I first got it, this is the section here that had juice all over it. As you can tell, the machining is impeccable. Those marks, again, are from me. It's not from... ESG. I would use this as a drip tip. I would really like to see a custom drip tip that's Ultim or Delrin that can replace this whole apparatus here. I'm not sure if they make that, but man, I would really like that. So let's take the rest of this apart. Grab it up here and down here and just unscrew it like you would normally. Again, these O-rings will be tight when you do this. Looking at the chimney assembly, just look at this machining on this. These cutouts, oh my god. Look at these cutouts of this juice flow right here. I just, I have no words. See how this piece is on. To adjust the juice flow is not the easiest. You actually have to take this off and then you spin this. It's not very easy with this piece on here. If you want to adjust the juice flow on this, you're better off just pulling this off a little bit. So this section here grabs this, and then you adjust it, just like that. Once you press this down, you're not going to be able to fight that O-ring. Because all you're doing is, as you spin this, you're trying to defy the O-ring's friction and say, oh, let's spin anyway. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. You're going to need to pull that out a little bit and then adjust it. So adjusting it on the fly may be difficult for some people, but you could see the action of that. What bothers me about this is, as beautiful as this is, there's actually no way to line up the ports on the deck with the ports of the chimney. No matter what you do, it doesn't line up. Threading is going to be on the outside of this chimney, which is going to go on the inside of the deck. Watch. So as you screw this down, you can see the one there and then the other one is right there. So no matter how you spin this, there'll be no way that you could possibly get both to be all the way open. You could get one where it's fully open, but then the other one is kind of half open. There's a little bit of a gap between the chimney and the deck, so juice may get in there, but if you're working with really viscous liquid, and the way that I like to run all my juice flow controls, unless I'm running a really thin liquid, I like to keep it all the way open. Right off the jump, the first thing I think of when I see this is the steam tuners bridge for the billet box. Really close ports, kind of a staggered situation. This is something that we're used to seeing that comes with high end. Usually small posts close to each other just because it's really designed for round wire. However, based off of the amount of airflow that's coming directly through the center, I feel that a nice juicy coil would work good in here. However, most juicy coils that most people would buy wouldn't have legs that are that close to each other. You have another O-ring down there on the bottom. So on most RTAs, usually you'll see a port and then a port parallel from each other. Not so much this. The ports for this are exactly where the channels for the juice flow are going to be. I think that's just a nice little touch. I don't feel like it really matters. On the bottom here, once fully open, you'll be able to pull the airflow control ring off. You even have a serial number engraved where the airflow control is. So if you're looking at the airflow control ring, you'll see a, a cutout. And what that cutout is for, so you can line it up directly with this and it goes on properly. Then that's going to slide on. It's a little, there it is. As you can hear, it's, it's a little stiff. And then you kind of twist it as you pull it on. Where the airflow is directly in the center is where you're gonna put the insulator or isolator, depending on how you look at it. That's gonna slide right in there like so. To get that out, I was under the impression you would just kind of stick this in and pull it up, or you can use the little bottle opener section of that go in here like so just like that, and that goes in, and then you pull it up. With this, the way that it is, I am going to use that wide open. And I'm not quite sure, but I believe there's three different sizes you could get for the air disc. And that's gonna allow you to really cut this down to a very, very restrictive style hit. So if you watch now, the way that I'm going to 
Wick, this is really, really simple. What I'm using right now is Maviton's cotton pad. I'll provide a link for you in the corner right there. Basically what I'm doing now is I really apologize for the gouge that I have in my finger. This is one of the reasons why I really, really hate flathead screws because as you're driving down, there's nothing really for the screwdriver to get a hold of. And some will tell you that there's a reason why you haven't seen flathead screws in engines lately or in anything. It's a very outdated technology and clearly my finger agrees. One thing to be careful of when you're doing a build like this and your juice ports are very, very small. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That's kind of the way that they've kept up with the times is they've always gone with these smaller ports. And this is usually on high-end devices. You will see these smaller ports. But you just really have to be careful that you don't put too much cotton in these ports, especially if it's a real viscous liquid because it's not going to wick properly. So what I like to do is just kind of put a very little bit amount in there and be weary of the actual airflow port as well because it's very, very close to the coil. The way that this is designed, your posts are very close together. That's going to make your coil very, very short. That is also going to only allow you to cover so much of the airflow while you have to be weary of your cotton that it's not getting into your airflow, thus causing it to leak everywhere. So you have to be very, very careful on building this. 0 0.80, bring it down to about 32 watts. There we go. Rocks in the treetop all the day long, hopping in a bopping and singing his song. You see how the one port is open? That's going to be totally fine. No matter how many times you rotate this, which way you do it, there's going to be no way that you're going to be able to have one wide open and the other one wide open. So you have to deal with just the one. So right now we're going to fill this up, go about halfway. That is the Skyline by EGS. For some reason, I feel like Nissan GTR, that's what I'm feeling, but I know that has nothing to do with it. Now, as you can tell with the drip tip, that this juice flow control kind of does look like a drip tip already. If you put a drip tip in there already with to on the top of that, it looks a little silly. Once again, this is the Skyline RTA by ESG. Let's bring it on the top. My lips smell like A1 steak sauce. Mm -hmm. We good with vaping over there? We good? Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys, so we are back on the top with the ESG Skyline RTA sitting on top of the PMMA Vape Droid Polished by Otis Collection. Big shout out to, I hope I say his name right, Fatty, Fatty, Fidei, Bidet, who loves a good bidet? You know what I'm talking about, you sit on a clean shit. Okay, let me show you some of the vape production work with. Oh my, oh my, Jesus. I don't know why I waited so long to do this RTA. I literally looked everywhere for this thing. My goal in hindsight of 2017 was to get this tank, and I couldn't do it. I just could not find it anywhere. When I saw it was available on one of my sites that I purchased from, I got super pumped up. I think I even did like a jumping jack, a push up, I did a pull up, and then I punched Brie in the face. So I did, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. That's why she's missing her bicuspid, because I hit her so hard, I got so excited. And I like, woo, like that, but I, when I get excited, I punch. Sometimes why in the middle of a review, my camera just falls off the mount because I punch it because that's what works. Just gotcha. Just like that. See, I'm so quick. You're like, Jay, you're a big dude. There's no way you're that fast. I don't know. Talk to Mike Tyson. Me and him, we bowed it out. Okay, when you first get this device, a couple things. Your O-rings are going to be very, very tight. And it's going to be very difficult for you to adjust the juice flow without any kind of tool. And it kind of sucks that you have to take it off to use a pair of pliers or something just to get it to spin. Once you get it spinning and once those O-rings are broken in, it's much, much easier for you to spin that top. Also, don't put the juice flow control all the way down as you spin it. You're gonna get nowhere really, really fast. And there's just absolutely no need for you to put it down all the way. I was under the impression when I was building this that I would be able to get both of those juice channels lined up with the actual juice ports of the chimney. That can't happen. You line up one all the way, you can line up both of them halfway, but even then lining them both up and you get just the one port all the way open, you're still gonna get juice in the other port. 
Hence the reason for the juice flow control. And the juice flow control on this thing is absolutely amazing. I've never seen juice flow control that instead of spinning a chimney, keeps the chimney stationary and then you adjust the juice flow control to go down. I don't know if this is like version two or version one. Wow, that's the best words that I have for this. In order to fill this, you have to take top cap off, pull off the juice flow control, fill it up, put back the juice flow control, spin it back on. Hopefully you don't mess up the juice flow. And I don't see really how you would just because of the hexagon shape. The drip tip on this looks really awkward. I find it looks much better without any drip tip at all and just using the juice flow control as a drip tip. I don't know why ESG hasn't made another adapter for this, like a Delrin or an Ultim, preferably Delrin over Ultim, where it takes place of the whole juice flow control in this way, it's an actual drip tip, sort of like the situation now. Now, I'm going to tell you with the drip tip that's in there, that's actually the juice flow control is badass. Like as a drip tip, yeah, that's badass. It looks cool, kind of looks like, uh, what do you call them? The, the, the six shooters, the little, little things you spin. Oh my God. Oh my God. Fuck. Fidget spinner? Oh my God. Did he really just say fucking fidget spinner? It goes on a revolver, fuck stick. Oh. He said a fidget, a waffle? Yes. Yes. You gotta love the people that I work with here. They're always, people look at me like, I'm entertainment, man. You should talk to the people that work here for like five minutes. Not only will you get educated, but you'll also forget the whole conversation in about 32 seconds. Cause you'll talk about goldfish, rice, crackers, cheese, tacos, knives, vapes, drippers, tanks, juice, flip flops, sandals, socks, heels, T-shirts, tank tops, shoes, sneakers, sneakers, file cabinets, file cabinets, rug, rug, paper towel, towel, washcloth, soap, alcohol cleansing. This whole conversation was 32 seconds that you talk to people here. It's not even a matter of a deficit of attention. It's a little too much attention for everything else but what's important in life. Instead of worrying about what kind of clothes you're gonna wear, they're more worried about how their clothes smell that they may wear tomorrow. A clip? A clip. Jesus Christ. A clip? A cylinder. She said a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Someone the other day, as I don't wanna get too sidetracked here. Someone the other day was watching one of my videos and was like, you are so mean to that Ryan guy. If I was him, I would throw my phone at your face because you're so ugly and bald. Listen, dude, if you're gonna try to insult me, at least call me something else other than what other people are calling me. Call me ugly and bald, but listen, there's women out there that wanna ride this ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Uh, that was my way of muting myself, so I don't curse. Uh, anyway, no, listen, but seriously, someone's like, you are so mean to him. Obviously, you have never watched any of my videos before because if you think that's mean, you need to go watch my two rant videos. What do you got? What are you doing? You got it? Okay. All right. A barrel? Okay. A barrel is what's... Okay. Nope, that's not it. That's what the bullet flies through. Um, as good as this tank is, it came with the fallback. When I got it, it was juiced up. As much as it pains me to say this, as much as I like this RTA, I have to take a point away just because of the extra stuff that was all on the inside of this. It's not that it was so filthy that it was uncleansable. It was very easy to clean. There wasn't a lot of it, but there was residue of something that was on there. I don't know why a company that's charging 185 euros, mind you, 185 euros, that's like 250 bucks, give or take. And it's got juice on it. I, I, uh. I got nothing. It's very easy to build on this. Just keep in mind that because the posts are so close together, your coils can't be really long, thus making the cotton really close to the airflow. 
And if your cotton gets into that airflow, you may have a problem with it leaking. It is going to be very easy to get this to leak. It's also going to be very easy to get this to build properly. So it's kind of a mix and match scenario. If you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you're just throwing the cotton inside of the RTA, like literally stuffing it down with an, I don't, I don't know what that is. That's me milking a cow in the air with very small teats. Like for instance, if I just take this cotton right now and I was building my RTA and instead of doing anything, I just kind of put, put it up here. Okay, this isn't working the way I planned. You get the idea, you're not gonna do this. You know, now your tank's got an afro. You can't vape off of that shit. Don't ask me to, because I'm not gonna try. That's really the only negatives I have about this. There's just those little things. The, the biggest problem, honestly, is once you get past, if you get it and it's dirty, is really the filling procedure, which is something on an RTA you're gonna be doing a lot of. You may get used to it. I feel like it would be much better if you could just unscrew the top cap that's unscrewing the actual juice flow control and that. However, that's not gonna be possible as the juice flow control is independent and its own proprietary situation versus the top cap that's just kind of housing it and keeping it in place. The machining on this thing is absolutely beautiful. I know people are gonna ask. I have to compare this to a GT3. I get emotional talking about it. That's how much I love the GT3. I really can't wait for the GT4. I don't wanna to get too sidetracked, but I'm telling you, oh my God. If you haven't seen my review for the GT3, I'll post a link right there. So the machining on this is better than the Typhoon GT3. There's no doubt about it. The deck is a little bit better on the GT3. More metal on the Skyline is machined better than most metal on the GT3 with the exception of the deck part itself. Both have juice flow control. They're both single coil. One is a little bit more restrictive, the Typhoon GT3 versus the Skyline that has massive amounts of air or you could use little insulators in it. Same thing with the GT3. You could buy insulators, but I don't know why you would need to because there's so many different presets. It's easier to adjust. Now I know I'm comparing a lot to the GT3, but I I have to. It's easier to adjust the airflow on the GT3 than it is on the Skyline. For me, for some reason, when I adjust the airflow on the Skyline, I have to take the whole tank off of the mod, then adjust and put it back on, which isn't necessarily a bad deal. I have set airflow that I like in all RTAs, regardless of the build that I have inside of it. The height of this tank versus the GT3. Now, if we're talking about the GT3 in the most bare bones stock situation, it's a tall tank. It's about as tall as this, and it also has a very proprietary juice flow control where it has a drip tip of two little prongs to sit in it as you spin it you adjust the juice flow control with this same situation sort of it's got a hex bolt so there's a lot of similarities between the two but they're not clones of one another that's important to note they're very very different rtas i can't let it beat the gt3 okay on a scale of zero to ten rating this versus the gt3 of how close it comes to that rating is a 9.5 that's not saying i'm giving this a 9.5 that's saying that comparing it to a gt3 on a 10 10 scale that would be one of one that would be i could hold them both on the same guideline the gt3 is also much 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 cheaper than this that doesn't mean that this price point is a little too high i really like this rta like a lot i'm gonna go out of my way and try to contact esg see if they'll make a custom tip for this because i would like this with delrin i would also like it if we could bring that tank down a little bit i feel that this is going to be more finicky than working on a gt3 and i know that there's a lot of other single coil rtas out there but when we're talking about single coil high-end rtas the two that stick out the most to me are going to be the typhoon gt3 and the skyline there's no doubt about it believe me i went into this because everybody's like you're gonna love that skyline, you're gonna love it. And I probably avoided it, well, because I couldn't get it, but I probably avoided it more often than not just because of the fear of taking over the GT3. Believe me, it's close, it is. But the GT3, the way that my GT3 is, I, I, you just can't beat it. It's got the steam tuner situation, love that company. It's got an Inakin drip tip, which is a little weird, but it's a friction drip tip. Post the link right there if you're interested in the drip tip because when you change the tanks out, you get a whole new juice flow control and then your previous drip tip doesn't work with this. Also 510 can 
configuration. The only problem I have with the GT3, after so many years of using it nonstop, the O-rings that are on the bottom of the deck, I've swapped them out a hundred times. I still get leaking through the 510 drip tip, which is on me. I have to get that perfect O-ring or buy an O-ring set specifically sold by Smoker Store to people that make the Typhoon GT3 to make this that much more perfect. If I was to rate this RTA on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it a nine. Now, I'm not quite sure what I gave the GT3 back then, but I know I did rate it high. I could still tell you that the GT3 is that much better. All these years of using it, I would rate the GT3 a 9.8, 9.9, almost a 10, almost. I'm not gonna get into what can be fixed because it's not about that. This is just an amazing RTA. It really, really is. The biggest problem is just filling it up. And that's not really even a problem and the height of it. With this, I highly, recommended for anybody that likes high-end RTAs. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jay Hazel.